Well, good morning. We are back at the IDGC. This is the second day of the PDGA Championships 2011. And Liz, it's going to be the second day of steamy, clammy shots all day long. Absolutely. You know, they are forecasting a little bit of a break in the temperature, but I don't know if we're going to see it today. Well, we're going to get out today, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to let you hear from some of the players. Here's the PDGA player talk. All right, we've been able to catch up with big germ Jeremy Colin coming off of his big win at the Yetter Championship in Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Where was the tournament at? Uh, it was in Tyler State Park. And yeah, just outside of Philly. What did you actually do to win? Um, I had to hit a lot of lines. It's a real technical course, um, similar to here. Uh, so hopefully the uh, the lines I was hitting out there translate. Hopefully I'm still running off confidence and you know. Sure. Yeah. So I mean that's months. that's essentially what these courses are out here. Um, mm -hmm. So I take it you're feeling pretty confident coming into this weekend. Yeah. Sure. I, you know, anytime. Anytime you get a win like that with the competition that's out there, um, you know, it does a lot for you. So, Well, I know uh, a lot of the same competition is probably going to be here this weekend. Um, is there anything you'd like to shout out to any of your competitors? Yeah, there's a lot of sideline lines out there, so hope you guys find ways to manipulate your backhands through there. But no, I, I like throwing a lot of sidearms out here, and uh, there's a lot of good lines. So hopefully it's just whoever throws the best shots this weekend, you're going to get rewarded, and whoever makes the most putts is going to win the tournament. All right, there's Jeremy Colin. Thanks for having a word with us. Absolutely. Well, all right, we've been able to track down Nico Castro. Nico, how's it going today? It's going good. Feeling good. great. Good. Glad to see you here. I yeah, mean, it's really nice to be here. It's my first time in Augusta playing disc golf in, at this course. Really? The PDGA course, yeah. Wow, what do you think of the, the property so it's far? It's nice. They have a really good layout, and you could tell they did a lot of hard work clearing it out, so I'm just going to try to come out here and carve some lines and have a good time. All right, I know you're one of the well-respected players here. A lot of people are going to be out there trying to get your spot and throw your shots. But uh, I mean, how, how do you feel? What's next for you? What have you been playing lately? Well, I'm feeling good. I just took about a week off and spent some time with my family and tried to get my head right because I've had a couple rough tournaments here in the last part of the year. So it would be nice to win my first major 2011 and the last one. Yeah, wouldn't I have that be one great? more chance. So it would be nice to get another major under the belt. Yeah, and this is the inaugural event as well. Absolutely. So you could hold the trophy for a long it would time. Be nice. Well, Nico, I wish you the best luck this week. Thanks Thank so much for the interview. Thanks a lot, Liz. And I uh, hope to see you on the top. Appreciate it. Well, all right. We've caught up with this year's women's world champion, Paige Pierce. We caught her, I think, just before she's starting to practice on these courses. What do you think, Paige? Do you like these courses? Yeah, I've only played the Hedrick course and the Jackson. I haven't played the Warner yet. About to go play it. Um, Hedrick is very short. A lot of birdie opportunities. The Jackson's very hard. Not very many birdies, so evens out. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a long week for a lot of players out there. Yeah. Now, do you feel that some of your skills in the woods that you proved to us at the World Championship will help you out here in the woods here? I definitely do. Um, last weekend was U.S. Women's, which was wide open. And this weekend, it's going to be more wooded like Worlds, and I think it's going to help my gameplay. All right, well, it's going to be a true test of champions this weekend. Um, can you talk about some of your competition? Are you worried about anything out there? Are you looking forward to the event? I'm always, you know, thinking about the competition, but mainly it's just playing the course. And if I do good, I know that I'll win. I know I have the skills, so I just got to play the course. All right, well, that's Paige Pierce, this year's women's world champion. Thanks a lot, Paige. Thank you. Before we get you out to some live action, let's get over to the Jim Warner course where Liz Carr is going to give you a tour. Well, all right, we've, we have arrived at the Jim Warner course here at the International Disc Golf Center in Augusta, Georgia. Now, this course was designed by Discraft owner Jim Kenner. It features chain star baskets. It's tight, it's wooded, it's elevated. It's going to be a lot of fun. Today, it's going to play at par 64 at about 7,800 feet. Let's go check it out. All right, the starting hole at Warner is about 337 feet. It does move right to left. It's a relatively easy backhand shot. However, at about three quarters of the way through the fairway, there's a very tight line that you're gonna to have to satisfy to get into the green. beautiful hole number six. Now this hole is pretty challenging. It's 333 feet long. Your fairway is, it's not the tightest fairway out here, but it is definitely 
uh, punishing along either side. Now at the very bottom here where you guys can't see it, right in the valley there's an OB Creek. And that is about, uh, about 100 feet short of the basket. So you can either lay up short and take your safety shot. But again, you can get down to the green with a nice lazy hyzer. have just seen some holes, all of them over 500 feet through 8, 9, 10, and 11. 12 was also long and challenging. We've gotten to hole number 13. It's a little bit shorter, only at about 282 feet. Now the basket, I'm standing on the circle's edge. It's right behind me, behind these two trees. It's a really tight fairway. It's straight uphill. I tell you what, it says 282, but you better be thrown for 350. We've come to hole 17 at Jim Warner Park. This is gonna be one of our last short birdie attempts. The gap on this hole is relatively small. However, if you can make it past that first one, don't send anything too hot down here because the green is sloped downhill. Go ahead and try to get this last birdie before seeing hole number 18, which is a very challenging par four. Well, all right, we just finished checking out the Jim Warner course, and it does not disappoint. It is like the other courses here. It is long, it is wooded. There are some short holes. You want to capitalize on those when you get them. And other than that, keep yourself in the fairway and make it up this last hill so you can turn in a good score. Well, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed Jim Warner. Now we're going to go track down the ladies as they tackle Jim Warner, and we're going to bring you some live action. Well, here we are at Warner Long, and this is the lead card of the women, Liz. This is hole number two, 320 feet, and yet another demanding tee shot. You know, that's right, and it, this is a hole that demands accuracy. There's a lot of woods, there's a lot of shul along the left side. The right side's a little bit open, but let's see what Sarah Stanhope can do with a forehand. Looks good. Just needs to penetrate. That's coming right at us, Liz. She's gonna have a putt uh, just outside the circle's edge, but maybe a clean look. Well, yeah, there's a lot of obstacles in between here and there. Now, here's the real battle going on for first, Billy. Right now, Val and Paige are only one stroke apart, and Paige actually just missed a birdie opportunity on her last hole. A putt just spit right out of the basket. She still has a one stroke cushion over Valerie Jenkins here. Uh oh, that's, that's a little wide. Oh, well, good she, kick. You know, she kept it low enough, even if it was a little bit wide, it wouldn't have gotten one of those you know, big air skips. Well, here's an opportunity for Paige because she started this round with a two-stroke lead. They've basically played half the round, and she's only given up one of those strokes. So she's holding on this morning. You Thank bet. You know, Valerie's coming off of that win right off the women's nationals, and she's playing hot so far this weekend. But Paige, again, is just firing back. This needs a skip. That's going to leave her about a 40, maybe even 45 footer. You know, I've seen her make putts, Billy. Uh, we'll move on down now as Val will be out first. All right, Billy, we've got three women's world champions here. All three of them trying to battle it out for the PDGA championship. Valerie Jenkins here is a tricky shot, but again, you know, all she has to do is get a par here and put some pressure on Paige to try to make her putt. Well, and it's, uh, it's a little different and a little weird. I mean, they're playing two majors in a row. Uh, I mean, the brain needs a little rest, I think. Yeah, these are disc golfers through and through, Billy. Let's see if they can can their putts. Well, here we go, Paige Pierce. Now, she can make putts. She is well known for her putting abilities. I, I don't know if she has to manipulate a line around one of those trees there, but. No, she's got a pretty clean look, uh, as long as she doesn't throw a hazard putt. All right, there, I know there's a lot of noise going on, a lot of things going on. This oh, is the International goes, Disc Golf Center. There goes a car, there goes the golf cart with some coolers in it. Oh, oh and what a, a great bench. 
Maybe quarter inch low. I mean, that was a solid bit, especially since she had a spit out on the last one. Doesn't look like she's lost her confidence. Oh, no, not at all. And, you know, even after her spit out on the last one, she said that's the first putt she's missed all day. Well, now Sarah Stanhope getting ready, and Sarah's maybe about 42 feet. Paige was probably about 45. This is absolutely not a gimme, just a little bit uphill. You know, Stanhope is a great jump putter. Um, I do see a stump in front of her. I wonder if she's going to choose to jump putt this or not, but I know her jump putts are pretty solid. Great Money. putt by Sarah Stanhope. Well, that'll get her one stroke closer, and she's happy yeah. with that. You know, she went two birdies in a row, Billy. Well, we're going to let this is the lead card of the pro women's here at the 2011 PDGA Championships. And these girls are gonna have a battle. They've got two more rounds and a final 10 after this. Yeah, there's a lot of golf out there. Val with a solid three. Now Paige moving in to tap hers in. We'll get around the course. We'll see if we can find these girls on another hole. This is Saturday morning's action, the second round from Warner Long at the IDGC. Well, we're gonna stay with the, the lead card of the open division and things. That's right, Billy. Things are getting exciting for these girls. Well, we're at hole four, 231 feet. Oh, this just says, please birdie me. Stanhope on the tee, but dramatic uh, score change on the last hole is. Yeah, you know, Paige just found some trouble right off the beginning of that first hole. Um, and, you know, she ended up with a six and giving Val the lead back by a stroke. There's a shot by Stanhope. Oh, that's a good looking shot. 12, 14 feet, that's what you're looking for right there. Tell you what, I've watched Stanhope play about four holes and three of them are gonna end up being birdies. Well, she is solid and, you know, that sidearm is such an asset in these woods. Well, Val on the tee now. And I believe this is the first time of this event that Val's had the lead. Oh, good right, looking it looks shot. like a good shot. All it's gonna do is hold on a little longer. Well, she's gonna have a few trees to deal with, but for the most part, she's right up in that circle. Well, she's got about a 27-foot, 4-inch putt, but there is definitely two trees that's going to hamper her. All right, let's see if Paige can shake off some of that uh, bogey she just experienced and really try to get back out there and see if, I mean, she has to answer the call here. Oh, yeah, you don't win world championships if you don't have a strong mind. She's already let that go. I'm looking for a good shot here, Liz. Oh, that's early, Liz. A little early, but, you know, if she gets through there, she's... Not bad. World champ love there. Kicks on, hits on the left side of the tree. Kicks right. She's over. She's got an open look from about 27, 28 feet. But a chance to get that stroke back if Val doesn't make this big putt. Well, you know, I thought Val might be out, but um, Paige just sort of aggressively dropped that mini. In, and it's close. She's ready to make this putt. She wants a birdie now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, she's going to put all that pressure right back on Val if she makes it. Never outside the change, right in the heart. Yeah, you bet. Paige is going to lock that birdie down there, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get her lead back. Well, Val moving in now, and, you know, Val's got plenty of world championships to utilize some world champ love. I walked over and looked at her line. She does have a clean look there. There's a little scrubbage branch, but it's more in her eyes than in her throwing motion, so I look for this to go right in the heart, Liz. Oh, yeah, she's very well known for her putting. I mean, she's... A world champion or renowned female disc golfer. Everybody here is looking up to her. And what a difference. We were with the advanced groups yesterday and we could see the stress. Val's halfway through this round on the same course. Just a big smile and really knows how to handle these situations. Well, here's a chance to answer the call that Paige just threw out there. If she puts this, makes it in, I well, think we'll have Well, this is to keep uh, the lead right here as well. All right, there's putt by Valerie Jenkins. Well, this is the lead card of the women's, and you'll see why. We're looking at a star frame here on hole number four. Stand up is parked. Now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to switch gears. We're going to get over to the open men's division. This is the morning round Saturday. We're going to head over to the Saturday afternoon round on the Ed Hedrick course with the lead card, Liz. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now. For part two of the IDGC with Liz Carr and Brian Graham. Well, all right, we just came out of the Memorial Museum and now I see this big wall of plaques. Can you tell me what this wall is all about? Yeah, Liz, this is the IDGC is also home to the Disc Golf Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is actually an independent group, not really officially associated with PDJ, although we work very closely together. Of course, you know they recognize people every year who have given to the sport of disc golf. Some are top level players, a lot are promoters, tournament directors, but you know, it's 
historical. Started back in the early 90s, the first class of inductees, which included Ed Hedrick, is on the top row, and then every year they induct anywhere between two and four people who have uh, given to the sport. Well, it looks like these are the guys that have started it all for all the rest of us. Now, underneath this, I see all these beautiful trophies. These are the PDGA Championship trophies, are they not? They are. We, uh, we created this permanent trophy. It's going to stay here in the building. And then we've got these really nice trophies that will be given to the winners in each of the four divisions that are playing this weekend. Well, they look great. I know they'll be excited to get them. Well, all right, just opposite the Hall of Fame wall is this area. What's this all about? This is kind of a disc golf clubhouse. When you go out and play around on one of our three courses, this is a great place to come after your round, kick back, relax in the nice, cool building. Yeah. We've also got a video archives here. All right. I've, uh, made it a goal of ours to get a copy of every video ever made on the sport of disc golf so we have it for the future. Oh, how cool. Complete collection of Clash DVDs down there. <laughs> All right, we know we like that. Exactly. And then uh, another goal of mine was to fill the building with artwork. This, uh, this is a beautiful piece of art that was created by David French. David's a former amateur world championship. I watched him paint it this last year at the USDGC. Yeah, it looks like hole 18 at Winthrop. That's it. It's hole 18. I saw him painting. He painted it over four days during the tournament, and I, and I had to have it, so I went out and purchased it from him. And the building's filled with artwork from other artists, not just paintings, but sculpture, photographs, all sorts of art. All right, well, I hope we get to see some more along our tour. Let's head over to the pro shop. Well, as you can see, the IDGC, it is still growing, but it is a beautiful building, Liz. Absolutely, you know, and it's a climate controlled. Let me just point that out one more time. Well, we're going to get you back out now. This is some live action from the lead card Saturday afternoon over on the Ed Hedrick course. Well, lead card action it is. And right there you see young Ricky Wasaki and Nate Doss. Part of the lead card, Ricky Wasaki sitting at 24 under par. This is the Steady Ed Memorial course. This is hole number one and it's a beast, 601 feet. Basket down by the lake to the left. And this is one tight alley you've got to penetrate through. Now, Ricky Wasaki on the box. This is the third round of the 2011 PDGA Championships. He's sitting at 24 under par. Dave Felberg sitting at 23 under par with a monster round this morning. Paul Uliberry sitting at 22 under par also with a monster round. Both those guys shooting 51 over on the Jim Warner long course. And then Nate Doss, the only man that was on the lead card this morning, remaining this afternoon, sitting at 22 under par. Well, it's time to go. You heard the horn. Here's Ricky Wasaki. Ricky's out of Medina, Ohio. He's actually out of Fort Mill, South Carolina via Medina, Ohio. It looks like he's gonna try a sidearm here. If you can get yourself in a good position down just past where the short pin is, you've got a couple of easy alleys that you can get into the bucket. Oh, Ricky is down and he has hit a tree early. A double tree, I believe there, kicks him over. Back in the fairway, though, that is always a good thing. Now, David Felberg, monster round this morning. He's only one stroke behind Ricky. And he's looking to keep it going this afternoon. It's a good looking shot. Oh, just needed to miss that tree. But still, he's down there a good ways. Good start for Dave. Now making his way to the tee, Paul Uliberry. Paul's got the option, backhand, forehand. He's got all the tools. Oh, that's got away from him. A little high, a little right, but he's dropped back to the center of the fairway too, and that is nothing more than a good miss. Now here's Nate Doss. And Nate's put a good move on that. 
He's chopped some, you can see the leaves falling down where he's just slimming through there. We're gonna let him get on down to the green. Liz Carr's gonna join me and we're gonna call some live golf from you. Third round, PDGA Championships. Well, you can see he's coming back, Liz. He has gone up and surveyed the situation. You know, he he has a couple of different lines available now. It's whether or not he's going to try to attempt to get down to the green, get himself with the a putt, or if he's going to actually be able to uh, throw a placement shot. Well, now he's going to the backhand. One thing's for sure, Liz, is he has got to commit to the shot, or this is not going to work out like he wants it to. No, absolutely not. There's so many trees out here. You have to keep it in that available airspace. Well. He's going back. Now, he did walk up. He did take the time to, to survey his lanes. He's going back for a disc change. We'll, we'll see if this works out or not, but he is absolutely grinding halfway through the first hole. That's tight. You know, I think if it avoids the first couple trees, it's going to get down there, Billy. Oh, that is going beautifully at it. Wow. What a great shot. That's exactly what you want to do is he peered it right down through there. Oh, he's... Paul Uliberry with a, a great shot after a mistake on his drive. You bet, you know, and just what Wysocki and Uliberry are doing right now, they, it's just so indicative of how this course plays. When you're in a different spot, you have to come up with another line to get down to the basket. Well, it really doesn't matter how much you practice out here, Liz, because one tree can send you to an area there's no way you'd have went to practice from. So these guys have really got to have their game dialed in. And it looks like young Wysocki has also fell in the center of the fairway. Yeah, he could only be a couple of feet in front of uh, Uliberry and I'll tell you what, Uliberry just showed him how to do it. He's going a little bit wider. He's got to get off that tree. It looked like he threw a mid range there, maybe a rock. I think he plays for Team Enno, but it just didn't hook up as well as Uliberry's driver. Well, Nate, I mean, you know, he was quiet penetrating through the woods there, Liz. Oh, yeah, you know, he really benefited there. There's so many trees on the right hand side, and he just snaked through all of them. He's going to give himself a good opportunity to maybe even get a birdie on this par four. I can tell you now, Nate didn't practice from over there, so we'll see if he can dial up his shot. If he can see it, he can throw it. And something interrupted me. I didn't hear anything, Liz, did you? No, I didn't hear anything at all. All right, it's gotta move downhill. Great shot there. Those guys, you slow down. Oh, and he hits a loving tree right next to the basket. That could have skipped down to the water's edge, but no, he is right in there now on the left side of this fairway. Here's David Feldberg. That's right. He's got a couple of national titles underneath his belt, and he'd, I'm sure, to love to have another one. Well, that's got to get down, Liz. It's coming in. It looks like it's so. He was afraid it went in the water because he knew he threw it too high, but it stopped it in. He's going to have an opportunity for a long step putt for his birdie. Let's get on down to the green and see exactly what they're left with. All right, we're at Ricky Wysocki here now. This is a dangerous shot. It's moving a little bit downhill. There's a little bit of breeze coming off the lake. I just heard an angry bear sounded like about three holes. <laughs> oh, he hit the front of the cage. What a good bid. I'll tell you what, going downhill, you better hit something. Liz, I did not see David's flare way over there. I mean, he's down there next to the water's edge on what looks to be like a beach. Well, it looks like they don't know where he's at. He could be up a little bit shorter. You know, we're just all in search right now. Well, it looks like they have located it. I'm telling you now, if David can see this bucket, he is playing his A game today. This is going to have a chance. Well, Liz, it looks like he's got a clean line. I mean, not nearly as bad as where he initially went to. Well, he is David Feldberg. He is a good putter. He's maybe 43 to 45 feet. I mean, this is a realistic look for Dave. Well, yeah, and it's, it's, he's at a level place to the basket, too, which is a little bit easier. Never a doubt, as that was right in the heart, and Dave is playing great today. Now moving in down around the backside. Oh, great shot by Julie Barrios. He hit that early tree off the tee, and now he's set up for a great birdie opportunity. All right, the breeze, breeze is kicking up a little bit here on this Clarks Hill Lake, but not a problem for you, Barry. It looks like young Ricky Wasaki is going to give a share of the lead to David Feldberg right now. Paul Yulabari and Mark Barry is going to move in one stroke behind. And I believe May Doss is also. 
also so Ricky Wasaki cost in the group a star frame here on the hole and surrendering the lead. That's the first hole here at the 2011 PDGA Championships. We're going to follow this group around a little more and give you some more live action. Well, we're going to stay with this lead card list. What a beautiful hole, number three here at the Ed Hedrick course. That's right. You know, these guys are trying to, I mean, it's definitely a battle. You know, Uli and Doss just got birdies on that hole while Waisaki and Felberg got a par three. Now, Waisaki missed a pretty easy putt. Feldberg had about a 50-foot putt. It's okay to miss one of those. Well, Waisaki feeling the nerves a little bit. There's Juleberry on the tee. He's right, going with a sidearm here. Yeah, this is kind of a questionable shot. There is a little bit of wind down here. It, and it, the shot moves downhill. Whereas, I'm not sure what he was doing there. I'm not, it's almost like he just tried to punch it down for a layup. It's just a nice little yeah. sort of a backhand mid-range that just finishes right towards the old bucket. Nate, Nate's going to show us, I believe, the line we're thinking about, Liz. Oh, that's right. You know, this is just kind of a fading hyzer line. It's definitely uh, birdieable. That's a little early, Liz. It's got to get down, and it's... Oh, it got down. Yeah, early tree, early wood, never good. Now, here's David Felberg stepping up on the tee. I think he's ready to make that push, try to get out in front of these guys. And you can see Dave sporting his beard today. He could shave that off tonight. <laughs> shave half as early as Oh boy, I tell you what, these guys are having a hard time with this hole. Oh, let me tell you, when you're at the hotel or wherever you're staying, you are counting. This is a two when you're going through this round in your head. It's a pure shot, mid-range, and you just throw a pure shot in the gap, and it'll finish right out the basket. You bet, keep in mind, these are all thousand-rated players we're watching here. It's too high, Liz, and too early. Well, you know, if it's a putt, it might slow down, but, oh, he's going to have a putt there, though. I'm rather disappointed from the lead card. We just seen the second card come through. They did have some putts, so oh, let yeah. them come on down. We'll see exactly what they're left with. Well, Phew, you know, I just got some word from uh, a spectator that I guess Ken Kleiman was the only one that has landed on this green. Can you believe that? Wow, well, the wind coming up, you know, we feel the wind rushing at our back. That and was maybe, a routine upshot by Paul Uliberry there. Maybe they felt the wind rushing up and they were throwing it inside, feeling like it was going to push it outside. Stay still. Nate, now I think Nate's just doing a layup here, Liz. He's just going to push it out wide and let it fall to the bucket. Hey, it would be unwise to do anything else here. Yeah. Smart player, Nate Doss. You miss your birdie opportunity. You just want to get up and down. I just, I've seen all these guys play, and I know they all have this in their, in their wheelhouse of shots. Look at this, Liz. Oh. Boy, that oh had boy. an opportunity. It sounds like it rolled quite a ways down there. Oh, Liz, that squirmed in between the rocks and, and went on down. Now here comes young Ricky Wasaki. Now he's the only one that has a putt here. He did play tight, but he managed to, to you know, get enough kicks to get to where he's at now. Well, I think the third tree dropped him right where he wants to be. If he can bang this, this will be a huge momentum change and maybe something to calm his nerves. Well, give him the lead back by one stroke. Looks like he might be inside the circle here, Liz. Tolo mm -hmm. never had a chance. Nope, not at all. Now Felbert anxiously moving in, trying to find out where his roller went to. Well, here's Dave Felbert. This is for par and shouldn't be too much trouble. Yeah, you know, he suffered from a roller to get to that spot, but it's not that bad. Ooh, that was at the top of the cage, but it did sink to the bottom. Well, he was below the bucket, and he absolutely almost over-exaggerated that. He'll pull that out. We'll let these guys tap in. This is the lead card, and this is the third hole here Saturday afternoon on the Steady Ed course. We're going to see if we can get around and get in position and show you one of the sweetest holes on this course. Oh, hole number five, 522 feet. You can see the alley that they are forced to shoot out of. 
They're gonna come down. They're gonna carry this thing out right of the woods as high and hard as they can, and the wind is whipping out here. They don't know it. I don't know if they can feel it, but they're gonna run into a headwind. And on the tee right now is Paul Ulibarri. <laughs> Yeah, I'm imagining. Yeah. Well, here's Paul Uliberry. Oh, and he has ripped it. He has got it out here. It's a good looking shot, still in the air. And he penetrates down in and he's got himself about a 20 footer for a birdie on this 520. That'll actually be an eagle putt for Uli. Now here's Nate Dahl stepping to the tee. Nate winning another world championship this year. He certainly got his form together today. And it's eerily calm down here now as the wind has quit. When oh, Nate's ripped one out, that's a little short, I believe. He stays clean. He comes through. He's going to be about 50 feet short for his eagle chip. And now potentially your rookie of the year, young Ricky Wasaki. He is battling with David Wiggins Jr. for that rookie of the year and putting himself in position here at this major could lock that rookie of the year up for him. Now the wind has just all but quit out here. Oh, and young Ricky's got a good line. It's penetrating fast. He needs one release skip. He gets it, he gets on the backside. He's gonna be about 45 feet from the bucket. He's gonna have a clean look. And now here's David Feldberg. Dave has not got quite as much air. He needs to penetrate up. Oh, and he hits the sand, gets no release. He should have a relatively easy up and down for a birdie putt. We'll let him come on down, see if young Paul Ulibarri can get his eagle putt. David Feldberg now setting up. This will be more of a, just a layup, I would think, Liz. You'd think so. I mean, all he really wants to do is get a three here. And well, look on. at David going at it. He gave it a good bit, but he'll have an easy tap in for his birdie. I'm going to guess 40 to 50 feet away, Liz. I would say that, you know, this he's definitely made these putts all day long. Well, he's got some wind coming up off of the lake. It's not as bad as when they were on the tee. Frail. Ripped right out the back. Wow, what a great birdie attempt. That'd be, that'd be an eagle attempt. That though. actually was an yeah. eagle attempt. And here comes young Ricky Wasaki over. Well, this is an absolute eagle attempt right here. He's probably somewhere around the 40 foot range. Well, the wind just died down. He should have no trouble making this putt. It'd be a big move. Yeah, he would have had a big tailwind, which is tough on a putt like this. Well, he missed it on the left side, though. Can't capitalize on his strength there. He had a real chance to make a move ahead. Well, Paul Uliberry now setting up, and this was a great drive as he skips right up. He's probably going to be about 18 feet short. And this is an eagle putt. He's trying to put the move. He's trying to get to the lead of this pack. Don't you know it? The wind has picked back up, Liz, as the boats come by with the Saturday afternoon fun. There you go. He missed his as well. Looking at the boat, he sort of stares and smiles. Lack of concentration there from Muleberry. Tough to let a great drive like that go as he had an eagle opportunity and just gave a free stroke away to this group. Yuli for birdie. 
pretty routine putt there, just about the same distance as he was away from the first putt. Well, these guys have got a long afternoon out here. We're gonna get around now. We're gonna see if we can run down the second card, which is also full of powerhouse players, and bring you some live action for the PDGA Championships. Well, we have run down the second card. Will Schustrick, Cam Todd, Avery Jenkins, and Devin Owens. We're out here on hole 12, Liz, a 388, and man, is the wind prevalent. Yeah, you know, the wind has been picking up all day. Players are struggling. They haven't seen a lot of this wind all weekend long. Uh, you know, this is 388 feet. There's not too many obstacles until you get all the way down to the end of the flight pattern where there is a multitude of, or of trees that you can hit. Well, no chance for early wood here, but late wood for sure. As you can see, it's, it's just a poke and hope as you reach the green. Once you get to the basket area, though, you've got a pretty defined green. And Avery Jenkins on the tee. Avery's probably going to take something stable. He's got a little tailwind left or right coming off, and he's going to probably try to keep it low. Well, you know, if they float it out to the left a little bit, they can get that wind to push it right in there. That looks good, Liz. It's got to slow down a little bit. Oh, Liz, that has flown, and man, if that didn't hit that one limb, that might have flew the water. I mean... I have no doubt it would have flown in the water without that limb's help. Well, I mean, just a super smooth shot. That was every bit of about 420 when he hit the, hit the limb there. It looks like Cam Todd now making his way to the tee. What a superstar card this is, although a lot of these guys uh, were on the first card this morning. Well, this whole field is just powerhouse packed with all the great players. And Cam, oh, Cam does not get through the first tree. And that's going to be just an up and down for a par. Well, the gap they're looking at, Billy, from this perspective down near the green is only about 20 feet wide. Well, here's Devin Owens. He's the left-hander. I'm wondering, he's got the power. You think he might try a big house and just try to sneak through? Well, it's dangerous, but no, he's, it looks like he's keeping it low. He's going to hyzer out, and he's going to leave himself a putt. But, oh, that's going to be one tough putt as he's got a couple of nice little spruce pines between him and the bucket. Right next is Will Schustrick. He's the defending national champion. This one looks good, Liz. More direct line. He does. It's coming in straight and low. Oh, that's a mid-range rock he just threw on this 388 hole, and he's only five feet long. All right, let's go check it out and see if Cam can get near the bucket. Well, it looks like Cam Todd's setting up here. I mean, he's got still some work to do. He has multiple lines that he can pick. But again, this is not a long shot. It's just not an opportunity to get a two. Well, he's just got to avoid, I don't know, six, maybe eight trees on his way in. He's only about 80 feet out. That looks good. Well, he gave it a run. Cam known as one of the best long putters in the world, showing you why right there. Shoot, did Avery Jenkins get lucky there? I tell you, I think that branch kept him from going OB. He's going to have a nasty, nasty shot. Well, he missed four or five things that would have put him over there for an easy putt. And he's got his... He's really got a good attitude on today. I mean, he was in the lead this morning, and a lot of times when you fall back out of that lead card, it can ruin your weekend or tank your attitude, but he is staying positive, and he's looking to get right back in that lead card for tomorrow morning's round. That's right, Billy. And you know, he's taking time like he's gonna run this pot. Well, I think he walked up. I think he's actually got a hole here. If he's got an alley, he's gonna give it a bit. He's got a little bit of headwind, which will help What's keep that? it up. Well, that'll safely get him a three. No problem there. Now over on the right side of the green, Devin Owens is moving in. This is every bit of 50 feet, Liz. In some people's worlds, yeah. That's too high, oh, Liz. It's way over the bucket. Well, he gave it a bit, but it just was way too high. Well, you'll see Will move in now. He may not be out yet. He threw a beautiful rock up there five feet long, about 14 feet right. And he moves on past this disc because it's going to be Devin Owens first. Devin yeah. Carter Parr. All right, Cam Todd to finish up his par putt. Good to see Cam back out here and playing strong. Yeah, such a quick player. <laughs> It must be fun to play with. Well, now here is the defending champ. Man, he'll card the only two in this group. Not a problem. Now these guys looking to make their way back up to the lead group. 
and we're gonna work our way around and see if we can finish up one more hole for you with the lead car from Saturday afternoon here on Steady Ed, the 2011 PDGA Championships. I have a jump on my push jumper. Oh, there's a little birdie back there. Well, we have found the lead card, Liz. That's right, and boy, the action's heating up, Billy. Well, Dave Felbert's on the tee, and he's the guy making the move right now, trying to get himself back up into the lead. Oh, boy, yep, and you know, he's going to be distracted here in just a second. Well, he, uh, he had a fan sort of wandering across the fairway. This is a magnificent hole, 17. Oh, 305 yeah. feet lift. Going over a creek and that right around the green is some rocks. If you don't land soft enough, you might roll down into that creek. Well, that's a great shot. Pin high, maybe 20 feet left. But Scary it, putt. It but does make you think because you can see that runs right down to the creek. But let's, who's putting? Dave Felber. Well, now on the tee, this young man, they thought they could crack him. And he has held on. He is tied for the lead. He's sitting at 33 under, tied with Nate Doss. And this is Ricky Wasaki. You know, he's nominated for Rookie of the Year, Billy. I tell you, Rookie of the Year, maybe Player of the Year after this. Well, he is. This is another beautiful shot from the kid. Oh, what a nice little kick by the tree. That's an easy putt. Nate Doss now. This is Saturday afternoon. We're on the Steady Ed course. And this has just been a treacherous afternoon of just good kicks and bad kicks, Liz. Oh, yeah. Well, Nate seems like he's getting some good kicks because he shot himself all the way back up to be tied with the lead after you know, sitting in third. That's a good looking shot, and he's a little legs. Oh, he's there. I'd say that's the optimal place to be putting from. Uphill, no danger of that creek looking behind you. Yeah, uh, Ulubari came over to me on the last hole and said he has had five air ball putts today, and he doesn't even know how to handle it. He's never had five air ball putts oh, in he's not round. handling it well right now. That tree is awfully friendly because he was going right toward that yellow OB rope line. Right, we're going to let them come down. This is the lead card from the PDJ Championship Saturday afternoon on the Steady Ed Hedrick course. All right, we got Ulberry here now. He is well past the green and in some rough stuff. Oh boy, he has got a stick in the bum. He's he's got a stick. I mean, he's got a tree in the bum. It looks like. Poor guy. He's not going to get this here. This is one tough putt. Oh. Yeah, what a putt by Uliberry there. I'll tell you what that is, look at the smile on his face. Well, after Beautiful. five air balls, and then he gets in the toughest situation, and he drains it. A great putt there. Yeah, was a good putt. It looks like Dave Felbert's going to move in. Dave Felberg is moving up to his putt again. This putt is very short, but it's got that tester behind it because he's looking at an OB, OB creek, and if he gets into that water, he is OB. He seems like he's confident today, though. He's been smiling most of the time. Well, he said he, uh, he had some problems driving, and Kenny took him out and worked it out right before the tournament, so his confidence is really up. Oh, when it lipped out the back, it didn't, it didn't roll. It did lip out the back. But, uh, Sounded so solid. And you know, there is, I believe, a scorekeeper directly in his line behind him, not really paying attention. I don't know if that had anything to do with him missing that putt, but. I believe that's actually just a spectator. Uh -huh. All right, Nate Doss here. Here's a chance for a two. This isn't a really long putt either. It's probably optimal position to be in, though. Well, Nate, right now, tied for the lead with Ricky Wasaki. David Felburn behind him with a spit out, and David's going to be two behind now. All right, well, we expected Nate to make that putt, did not expect Dave to miss it. Waisaki should be able to knock this one down for a two. Yep, this there is, it is. This has been some lead card action for you from the Saturday afternoon round here on the Steady Ed course from the 2011 PDGA Championships. We hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned to Mars. We'll bring you some of the morning's round as well as some of the final nine. For Clash DVD, I'm Billy Crump. And I'm Liz Carr. Now for some I'm on Cloud Nine post round interviews with Miss Liz Carr. All right, after the completion of the third round here at the PDGA Championships, I'm standing with Ricky Wysocki and Paul Uliberry. Wow, what, what a round that was. I know the wind started to kick up a little bit today. The temperature is just thick and sweaty and disgusting. So. Uliberry, I know you had some trouble out there putting, but it seemed like you pulled it together at the end. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was a struggle pretty much after the first six or seven holes when we all started to sweat and stuff. And, uh, you know, my hands started to get a little clammy and then my grips were, you know, a little off. But you just got to focus and, and stay, you know, stay on the course and do your best every time. So. That's right. I mean, we've seen your positive attitude get you through some pretty tough spots. You know, you after missing a bunch of putts, you were able to come pull yourself back up. And can how long was that putt on that uh, that last hole? Was that 45 feet no through the brush? Yeah. Well, I know we all like to watch it. Yeah. Ricky Wysocki, nominated for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I gave a few up early, a few strokes early, and uh, I had to fight my way back from the very beginning, and I I stayed in it and uh, kind of never looked back. Into the first few holes, I gave up a few strokes and kind of worked my way back. Well, your mental game definitely shows here. It's really hard to play with the guys that are at the top, and you seem to be holding on. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's still learning, and uh, but I've, I've played, I guess, enough tournaments to know what to do and how to handle everything. So I guess it's working out. All right, you guys excited for tomorrow? Yeah, should be another long day. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Ricky Wysocki, yeah. Paul Uliberry. Yeah. He's there. Paul Uliberry, Ricky Raisaki, round three, the PDGA Championships. All right, I have, this is the final round, the third round here at the PDGA Championships. I'm standing next to Dave Feldberg and Nate Doss. Both of these guys are world champions. They're both national champions. And all I'm here right now is to talk about your round. How did that final round go for you guys? And I know, Nate, you're making moves right now, <laughs> trying to get back up on top. You were first card coming into this, uh, the only person who has maintained the first card after the second round. Um, it looks like you're shooting hot. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I really don't know what went on out there. It's been a long, hot day. It's just a grueling day on the course. Um, the course, uh, both courses that we play today are in the woods, and uh, it's just about maintaining the focus, and you, you're going to take a bad break here and there. So had a bad, few bad breaks, but a few good breaks, and uh, I feel pretty good about the day and, and looking forward to tomorrow, definitely. All right, that seems like a great attitude to be going into tomorrow with. I know we're excited to see you play world champion this year, so yeah, thanks. You know, we're excited about it. Yeah. Dave, what happened out there? The wind was picking up a little bit. Um, how are you, you feeling? Know, really, I'm just fat and out of shape right now. I've fat been, and out of shape, all right. I've been as fat as I am right now, and I'm just out of shape. You can see me sweating out here. But now there's a reason for that. I know you contracted poison oak pretty bad. I took some steroids and stuff, but I got lazy. I had a lot of milkshakes, I can't lie. <laughs> Truth of it is, is I'm just out of shape out here. And I mean, I threw mediocre shots that round, and the course kind of let me through. I missed a couple easy putts. Spit me once, but it gave me three other great kicks, you know? So basically, the course kept me in the tournament. I played mediocre. Well, you know, we saw you shoot an eagle on a hole, and, yeah. you know, that was pretty exciting. And then even maybe direct your disc on the shorter hole that was exciting to watch well i'm telling you i've you know i have a pretty good year i've only lost on this property once and i think a few of the wins were you know i just threw it it went through the trees and i ended up being one stroke up on the guys they may even play better than me so it seems like maybe this place likes me or i'm augusta likes me. i'm not <laughs> sure but i'm happy to be playing with the gentleman tomorrow and have a shot because that's my favorite course over there so well we know that your mediocre golf even though it's mediocre is still keeping you right up at the top I appreciate the interview, sir. And yeah, Nate. You're welcome. All right. No problem. Problem. Yeah, to you, Dave. Yep. All right, it's the PDGA Championships after round three. Thanks, Liz. Well, Liz, I don't know about you, but I am ready for a shower. It is humid. This is Appling, Georgia at its best. At best or 100% humidity? <laughs> that is Appling, <laughs> Georgia. Now, we've had some great time today as we've had the lead card for you, not only the open women, but the open men. And tomorrow, we're going to give them some more of the same, Liz. Open women in the morning with some open men, and then we've got the big finale in the afternoon. You know, absolutely, Billy. We were out there today. We got to actually see the lead shift between the women and the men. So we've got to see a lot of excitement, a lot of action out there, and I hope, I hope you all enjoy it. Well, come back tomorrow at pdga.com as we'll be here to the last putt drop at the 2011 PDGA Championships.